You're going to have to feed on me. If you're going to live, you're going to have to eat me. You're going to have to eat, sleep, breathe me all the time. And if you ain't, you got a problem. That's right. You hear what I'm telling you? Yes. He's calling all of us to that place. Because when all these things start coming down, he's the only one going to be able to give you any comfort. He's the only one going to be able to feed you when it starts coming down. He's the only one going to be able to hear you when it starts coming down. It's going to, it's, you're going to depend on Him. I ain't want to go in all the Revelation and Ezekiel and all that tonight. I'm going to stay out of that. But I'm telling you, He's going to have to be everything. Now the Bible tells us when you get up to the to the new Jerusalem, it's going to come down. And, it's, and the Bible tells us that it's built on 12 foundations, which are, and it calls, it says they're on the apostles. But what it's talking about is it's built on the words of the apostles, the apostle doctrine. It's built on the teachings of the apostles. But when you get up to that place, it's got 12 gates going in. And the Bible tells us that they all one big old pearl. And remember, Jesus said, if you want to gain the kingdom of heaven, it's like coming down there and finding a pearl, a pearl of great price and selling everything you got so you can buy that pearl. Mm -hmm. you got to sell everything if you're going to get in. You can't just sell a few things. Mm -hmm. You can't just sell a little bit. You can't just sell this over here and then I'm going to keep all this other stuff that i got over here. All these things that I like over here that make me feel good, I, you can't just keep on holding on them. You hear what I'm telling you? Because we got a bad habit of doing that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to get rid of this one and this one and this one. But this one right here, I, I kind of like it still. I think I'm going to hold on to it for a while. No, no. You're going to have to sell out. You're going to have to sell everything. You hear what I'm telling you? That's talking about, he, Jesus said, he told them, hey, if you don't hate mama and sister and brother and family and all that, if you don't love it, me more than you love them, you ain't getting in. You hear what I'm telling you? You ain't got to hate them literally, but you got to love Jesus more than anything else. He got to be number one. And if he ain't number one, you got a problem. You got a big problem. You better find you a way to make him number one. You better find you a way and start calling out to Jesus. Jesus will change your heart. Yes, he will. He'll change your mind. He'll change your heart about a whole lot of stuff, believe me. But you got to be willing to do it. You got to be willing to receive that which he, he's trying to feed you, trying to give you. I'm going to keep reading down. I'm going to drop down into uh, verse 50, 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so that he eat, that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat the man and are dead, that he eat, that eat this bread shall live forever. Dropping down in the verse, in the verse 61. Does this offend you? What if you see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life, but there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore therefore said I unto you that no man could come unto me except it were given of him by my Father. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye go away also? See, it's a whole lot of people that came and sat up in church for a long time. But then the word came one day and the word was an offense to them. And the word didn't say what they wanted it to say. And Jesus didn't work things out the way that they thought that Jesus ought to work them things out. And so they said, I'm not going to follow you no more. This is a hard word. I can't receive it. I might have to go somewhere else. Now these people right here was, had followed Jesus all throughout his ministry. Some of these people right here was one of the 70 that went out and had power to tread on scorpions and serpents and did all them things and cast out devils and did and healed the sick and did all them things. But when Jesus told them, you're going to have to live on my word, they had to go. Mm -hmm. That word is an offense to me. i got to go. See, that's coming today. The Bible says that in the last days there's going to be a great falling away before mm -hmm. there's a gathering in. You hear what I'm telling you? That's what the Bible says in Thessalonians. It don't say gathering in, gathering in. It says falling away, then gathering in. And God is going to shake out those of the apostate church and they're going to go into the whole Babylon. Because she's going to tell them what they want to hear. Come on over here. 
Let me, let me delight your flesh. Come over here and eat, get all these sweet desires filled in here. And get all these things in the world. Come on over here. Those people over there are being too hard. That's not Jesus that's over there. Jesus wouldn't say anything that would offend anybody. Hmm. Well, that's what the people say right now. Uh -huh. Oh, that's not Jesus. Jesus wouldn't say that. You better go in there and read. He called them brood of and all kinds of stuff in there. Y'all better find out about the real Jesus. Amen. But Jesus told them, ain't y'all going to leave? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them and said, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. And so Jesus says, Peter has the right answer right here. Peter said, Where are we going to go? We don't have no other help. I done been everywhere else. I done been to every treatment center. I done been to every hospital. I done been to every jail. I done been to every place I can go trying to get me some help. And I can't get no help. So I'm just going to have to turn to Jesus. It's a good place to be down and out. It's a good place to be in defeat. And we'll bless them today that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Amen? Because God is sorrow work of repentance. But the sorrow of this world, it brings death. But if you can take God and sorrow and work repentance, guess what you're going to get? The comfort of the Holy Ghost is going to move over in. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then he's everything. He's that bread of life. He's that staff. He's that rod that Moses had when they come up out of Egypt land. God told him, don't be standing around here whining to me. Stretch out that rod that I gave you. Amen. God is telling some of you in here right now, don't be whining to me. Stretch the rod out. I done gave you all power in heaven and earth. All power to bind and loose. You just need to start walking in it. Amen. When God called Abraham down and they was going to cut covenant, Abraham had to get up and run the files up off of the meat there. He had to get up and get them all out of there. Sometimes you need to get that get up and get that devil out your eye. You hear what I'm telling you? Amen. You know you've been talking to him. He's been talking to you. Tell him, get out in the name of Jesus. He got to go. Amen. If you don't humble yourself before God and resist the devil, he got to flee. You can't sit around and just ignore him. God don't honor him. You hear me? You got to tell him, go in the name of Jesus. Amen. This, uh, you ain't got no place here, devil. If not, if the devil came down there and started trying to tempt Jesus and started not only trying to tempt him, but started trying to put the word on him. Now here he is, how foolish he is. He started trying to tempt God, the word of God with the word. That's right. See, but you got to be able to come back. But if you don't know the one scripture, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> Amen? Because he'll, he'll give you his and then you give him that one back and then he'll give you another one you'll be out. <laughs> You have to get on the phone and try to call the pastor and say, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> See, but if you've got the real Holy Ghost down inside of you, the Bible says he's written the, the word on the flesh of tablets of your heart, right? Yeah. So you need to just start stirring that thing up. Why you put your hand on your chest and say, I just stir up the gift that's inside of me. Yeah. Stir the Holy Ghost up inside there. Holy Ghost, get the stirring up in there. 